listening? It is I, Numator 479. According to our studies of your puny mammalian race, we discovered you like very good coffee. And while it is our evolutionary purpose to cause you psychic torment, we want you awake and vivacious to give it. So try our new blend from Spring Hill Jack Coffee, reptilian in the morning. Our proprietary blend of lightly roasted cocayo husks will have you immediately energized upon emerging from the pain cloaca with all your slippery new eggs. Thanks, honey. Hot, hot, I'm cold blooded. Ah. Mmm. Thanks to Spring Hill Jack and last podcast on the left, I'm ready to get out there and eat some babies. Get out of the way, Hillary Clinton. There's no place to escape to. This is the last podcast on the left. <laughs> Side stories? That's when the cannibalism started. Side stories, yeah. It's very, very, it's very strange because it's also about like how the, the Trump was an outsider, like everyone got mad in the books because he became president, but he was never a politician, but he fixed everything mm-hmm. by fixing the economy. And it doesn't really make any sense. Yeah. But it's also like, it's just all like very familiar. Yeah. And, and but it, they've been probably not paying attention to like in the end, like this person becomes the last president of the United States and the entire thing collapses. Yes. Cool. But it, no, that he fixes everything and we but, don't need another president. Oh. <laughs> He's fixing everything so and we what, now he's permanent. So what is what is per- replaced? Who runs the country afterwards? Honestly, I think it's just fucking Obamacare. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. Welcome to Side Story. Oh, that's how we start? That, uh, maybe it's how we start. Do you uh, want to start with like that? I've, you know, it's interesting. It's, no one heard my run up about this series <laughs> of coincidences about an ancient book written about a character named Baron Trump uh-huh. go in, who happened to get Nikola Tesla's time machine. It's a long story. <laughs> We're going to have to break this down. John yeah. Trump. They got a, it's a weird connection to the, the, yeah. the Trump family, to Nikola Tesla's fucking um, research legacy. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, it's definitely real. Any mentions of the book about this Baron Trump being a six foot seven goon? I, unless uh, I didn't see the cover. <laughs> I didn't see the cover. Uh, no, we got I, who knows? Because, I yeah. mean, you see him. You yeah. see Baron Trump? He's massive. He's big. He's huge. He's fucking, oh, did you see him like, he has to like carry his dad now and shit. <laughs> he's a big guy. He's going to kill a nurse. <laughs> I'm so afraid of what this guy's going to do. God knows. He's gonna, he, especially if he's not being watched. <laughs> exactly. He needs to be watched 24-7. I guess that's what Melania's doing. I'm Marcus Parks and Henry Zabrowski coming out with the hot future predictions. You never know. About who Baron Trump is going to murder. Well, it does remind me of the Uber driver that did tell me that Donald Trump had access to, uh, he found that there was time traveling goggles this is completely real this was told to me in an uber which i was like oh great you're driving yeah and it, he said in the basement of the white house there was a secret technology that donald trump defied the secret industri- industry industry against right he went against the intelligence committees mm-hmm. and he said no 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 i gotta go look at this and it was time traveling goggles mm-hmm. so that he could see into the future about how great a president he was going to be <laughs> and great while he was president. And meanwhile, like, you should have been engaged in the present. <laughs> president Trump. We have a lot of information that came in, a lot of pushbacks, but also a lot of reconfirmations. It's very interesting. And I'll take the pushbacks. Like, do we want to start with the pushbacks? Well, because I kind of feel like I need to address these people because I feel like I've offended many, many structural engineers you and did. geologists. Marcus uh, obviously fell in love. I did not fall in fell love. Fell in love. I may. I might have become enamored with the concept of digging in your own yard, digging in your own property. I became enamored with the concept. I know you love this idea, the tunnel lady. Yeah. Her account was called um, the the TikTok tunneling lady, uh, known as engineer.everything on TikTok, has garnered a lot of attention, a lot of appreciation because people love her can-do attitude. She wears pearls. She, you know, she wears like 1950s dresses. She looks immaculate and she's digging this giant tunnel underneath her home. And um, she's being stopped by the state because... Uh, there is uh, no regulations happening while she's building a tunnel underneath a very populous city. And it seems like that this was stopped for very good reasons. Very much so. Because <laughs> it's a, t- a topic known as hobby tunneling. Yeah. Which I do. We, we talked about this last episode about freedoms. Yeah. We love freedoms. 
We want you to be able to express yourself. I, too, wish I I want to be able to tunnel anywhere I want to go. I right? do, too. I feel that the earth, we you know, once again, the government's proving Pocahontas was wrong. because But I do feel because the United States government technically owns the land of the core that is underneath your home. They own the mantle. Do you know that? I know that mineral. They got that. They don't have, and maybe in cities, but way out where. But in, people do sometimes buy the rights to yeah. underneath your house. Yeah, it's called mineral rights. Yes, and then, but then they own it down to the lava, mm -hmm. right? Because then it depends on how deep you go. Ain't that weird? It's really weird. So I feel like you should be able to tunnel through it, but apparently, what it really does is destabilizes an entire city neighborhood. <laughs> because uh, we got some pushback because obviously Marcus <laughs> fell in love with the lady. I didn't fall in love with the lady. I became enamored with the concept of I heard tunnel it. digging. I heard it in your voice. You didn't hear anything. You heard me be very excited about digging, which we all know is one of my favorite things in the world. But ever since we talked about Marcus's erotic <laughs> obsession with this woman, my enamor with the concept. I understand. What you're saying. My wife is going to fucking rip your throat out. I I am sorry, Carolina. I'm sorry. It's she like listens this. to the show every week. Well, well she's, she's keep she's, tabs on you. She's listening. She's working out right now and she, just becoming mad. She needs to report the tunneling lady <laughs> and get her stuff taken down. No, she. Uh, it's it's. I understand. Okay, we we all want to dig tunnels, but I got a lot of people saying. Number one, um, people are obviously f straight up, which is kind of insulting. One email. Well, I'm not shocked. The tunnel girl has charmed Marcus. I do feel like I should probably call out how absolutely wrong you guys are about her project. And sure. they go on to talk about they working in construction and about how like all the various things she completely fucked up because she was in the middle of a city. Um, she lives on a quarter acre, which means a cave in would reliably harm her neighbors. Her neighbors are also people that were hesitant because some of them were immigrants. Sure. They were hesitant to come to the government and talk about what the hell was going on next door. All right. She didn't do any soil analysis, which is interesting. She doesn't know how structurally sound her tunnel actually is. She has actively dumped the sludge from wet drilling back and to the water table, which is at minimum an EPA violation. That's oh, the, vid idea. the villains from Ghostbusters? <laughs> <laughs> that's a bad idea. Now, I mean, I would imagine that the soil, if she's working in very, like, clay-rich soil, then that's going to be a good thing to tunnel because it's much structurally stronger soil no, it than, is. say, like, a, a sandy soil. Why is that, though? Why would that be? Because it, with clay, it's, though... It's denser. I don't know. Yeah, I do. But this is why we can't tunnel. <laughs> this is why we need to, you need to have soil analysis and people go, but yeah. they're also saying that the structures were completely fucked up. But also with this story, we got many stories of people tunneling. Hobby tunneling is big. And, and people who that have lived their whole lives, like this one story about the 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 moleman of uh, it's in Hackney, the moleman of Hackney in London. It was mm -hmm. by the name of William Little. Um, he dug a series of interconnected tunnels underneath his London home, and a lot of people got mad at that because it was London, it was <laughs> the center of a giant city, and he just got it in his head that he wanted to start. Digging, <laughs> I gotta start digging, right? He just, he dug out this series of tunnels. I think they said it was sixty-five different tunnels that led from his house out into the rest of the city. Yeah, um, as deep as twenty-six feet. I mean, which is crazy. Yeah, it's crazy, and it does again. It's fun. It sounds like the fucking burbs, but they said that the the, the neighbors complained that the ground would shake mm -hmm. um, because again. He's fracking his own house. <laughs> we did this last time. He's destroying the structural integrity of the the earth itself mm -hmm. underneath the home. And then they said he hit out, hit a power line, <laughs> and he took out an entire the entire neighborhood's power, <laughs> which is also hilarious. And the guy does look like a mole man. He absolutely looks like a mole man. He inherited this house in like two thousand and six, I think. Well, no, two thousand six is when they stopped him. He was evicted in two thousand six, but he spent many many years. He spent forty years actually. He uh, he inherited this thing in the uh, in the sixties. <laughs> That's a lot of tunneling. From 1966. Like, can you imagine that? You're in London, 1966. Oh, yeah. One of the yeah, baby, yeah. <laughs> Who's the, oh, you got in the mold on that? Oh, Twiggy. Yeah. Twiggy was there. Yeah. She would have slid right through those tunnels. One of the hippest, coolest times in the 20th century. Oh, yeah. Uh, and places. And you're digging a tunnel. You just you're don't care. You're tunnel man. You could have been down in Soho. You're going you underneath. You could have met the entire collection of the sex pistols and their accoutrement. That was 10 years later. 
fucking say it. You could have met them when they were children. And you could have been like, Sid, you need to be responsible. Yeah. Uh, they said you need maybe go to school there, Sid. What's his real name? Uh, his real name is... It's like Esther, right? Or like Re Reginald's. Oh, no. It's a Sidney's the name of his uh, hamster. His real name is... Uh, don't tell me. It is Gordon? John Ritchie. Oh, all right. That sounds I think British. it's John Ritchie. Yeah, good. Well, good. Uh, but they uh, they got rid of him, and now some artists, some yeah. big fancy pants. John Simon Ritchie. John Simon Ritchie. Uh, well, he, that's what William Little could have been doing, but he didn't. Yeah. He dug underneath the ground because he was unfuckable, <laughs> and he had these. He needed a better shirt. I was looking at this. He really did different. Need different clothes. They did end up putting him in jail because they fined him hundreds of thousands of pounds that he could not pay. Yeah. Uh, and then apparently, though, they actually for a while. They, they, he was trying to, he tried to break back into the house and they couldn't, the government took it. But actually, I was, I'm incorrect. He was not in jail. They just put him in an apartment and paid for it. That's incredible. They have different ways of doing things out there. It's nice because he obviously was going to, wherever he's going, he's tunneling. <laughs> right? So you got to put him in a place where he you can't, can't put get him to in, the basement. You can't put him in jail. No. He's just going to tunnel out. Tunnel out and everyone's <laughs> going to follow right behind him. So you have to make sure where he is. It's extremely difficult for him to tunnel. Technically, he should just not be allowed to have a, a shovel yeah. or a pickaxe ever again. Yeah, of and, course. And uh, I think, well, that could have been worse than death for him. And now it's been, and I actually found something that was, it was, it's an interesting little phenomenon uh, in England that I didn't know about it's called air hunting uh h-e-i-r like oh, air, air, air 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 hunting air hunting that's what the nazis did <laughs> and then, then no, that's heirloom hunting ah, yeah, yeah. no no air hunting is finding properties uh in which you know there's no known relative you know yeah. the, that for the property to be passed down to so they go and find the air and oh. show them, hey, this is your property. But a lot of times there's also like this. It can be a scam. Sure. Like, it could be like a middleman type thing. It's like, I found that you owe that you own this property. But if you only all you have to do is give me five hundred dollars and I can facilitate that. So a lot of times it's a scam. Yes. But sometimes it's not. They even have like a TV show called Air Hunters where they go and they find people and say, you own a castle now. You own a castle now. And you're just like, <laughs> fuck, the taxes of this castle are going to fucking kill me. Yeah. Uh, oh, my God. <laughs> The financial burden of my family. <laughs> Get away from me, air hunters. Uh, it's very scary. But that's also we do that with estate yeah. sales, and yeah. then um, and then our country, which is like we are right on top of its foreclosure sales. Yeah. So if you can't pay for it, then someone comes sneak your house out from underneath you and yeah. half the price. And then it's theirs. It's theirs then. And now you have nothing. <laughs> Bye, legacy. But that was that. There was also so tunneling is around. A lot of people are, uh, you know, again. It's mostly just, we, we talked about Virginia as if it was just rolling hills. This is back to the tunnel girl and engineer everything. Uh, and it's just because we you have to be careful when you're in a city. I'm going to give I'm going to give everybody, if anybody out there that's looking to do some like DIY tunneling, I'm going to read you one sentence from an email that we got that's just going to tell you that you, unless you are an engineer, Unless you work specifically in construction, you're not going to teach yourself how to do this because just listen to the amount of jargon there is in this sentence. The amount of blowout on the already compromised joints, which lack any sort of strong ties, will absolutely collapse at the most minor suggestion of burden after she hammers the ends of fiberglass rebar, terrible idea that sends stress fractures down the length of the rod, into the cobbled mix of sedimentary rock. No idea. She states that secured with grout. We're fucked. <laughs> yeah, that means you're fucked. That means yeah. you're about to be buried underneath thousands of pounds of rubble. And I do know that she, if she's using grout, that's you for fucking holding tile to the wall. Yes. That's not going to offer any structural value. And we got to be careful because I know we're coming against Girl Boss Nation. Yeah. But I know, and it's not that she, I'm, I, I'm glad she's a lady doing it. Because that's what they say. <laughs> hobby tunneling is a mostly male endeavor. Uh -huh. But and when it comes down to it, sometimes you got to get the government involved no matter what you say to yourself. I wish it wasn't that way either. I wish there was never a regulation ever. <laughs> so you say freelance tunneling needed a little bit of girl boss? That's it? what I got. I'm a strong nail <laughs> and a man on him. She needs a Sia in there. Yeah. That's what get her get motivated to get the proper permits. Get the proper permits. Unfortunately, you must get the proper permits. And if you don't get the proper permits, then just make sure that you do it out in the middle of nowhere. nowhere. Make sure no you do it. No one can see it. Where no one is anywhere near can be Montana, harmed by your tunnel. Upper Washington, the Dakotas. So much of Texas. So much of Texas. Stop. Alabama. <laughs>
<laughs> so many places. Go in the desert. It's easy yeah. to do. Sand. Yeah. Buy, your, buy yourself seven acres. Get yourself a house. And then do as much tunneling as you want. Tunnel all day long. Yeah. And then if you get buried in your tunnel and nobody finds you for weeks and weeks and weeks. That's your right. That's your right. You're <laughs> allowed to do that. You're absolutely allowed to do that. And hey, maybe, you, maybe you're going to find some oil. Hey, who knows? You never know. Black gold, Texas State. That's or... You find a bunch of corpses. Yeah, that's what I wonder about the dude in London. It's like, because, you know, London is a city on top of a city on top of a city, yes. you know? And they're still finding, like, Roman artifact, like, you oh, know, Roman yeah, bathhouses and all kinds of shit when they do construction in, in London. And I'm wondering if he found anything just, like, fucking incredible. Like, did he find, like, bones of plague victims? Because I know those are everywhere in England. I think he was a bit off his rocker. Ah. Um, and he probably just threw that shit out. Because <laughs> it's like, <laughs> he's doing in Motono. What's she doing in this is where I live. I live on the ground. It's mine. It's not yours anymore, Romans. Mm -hmm. It's mine. And so he just probably threw it in the trash. Probably. Just being like, garbage. <laughs> this ain't tunnel. It's anything. Anything that's done ain't tunnel. I don't make sure I make tunnel. That's tunnel. That's tunnel, eh? That's tunnel. All right. I also got some pushback um, and support from our boys overseas about the jellyfish videos I was showed on this week's UFO, uh -huh. uh, very serious UFO mandate. Right. And you obviously didn't take it very seriously, neither did Ed, because it's because Ed's ignorant. I, and he doesn't know yet. <laughs> but you know better. You I, know better. I know. I know UFOs. You know I know UFOs, and I you do. know that I know UFO videos. The jellyfish videos, however... You gotta listen. I'm not sold on the jellyfish videos. I'm, I'm gonna just send not. you some videos. You gotta settle in. You gotta listen to the witnesses. But I got... It's a really good information. So those of you that don't know, Jeremy Corbel and George Knapp on their weaponized podcast. And, and a lot of people, this is a guy I was, I said the joke on the stream, but it's true. It's the Sydney Sweeney of UFOs right now. Everybody's talking about it. It's, it's, it's hot to trot. Everybody's talking about the jellyfish UAP. And it kind of got broken on the Jeremy Corbel, George Knapp podcast weaponized, where he showed a video of this jellyfish UFO that was seen o over a, an, or a U.S. military base. Uh, and it's, it's creepy looking, and, you know, but a lot of people, assume, you know, like, oh, you know, it looks maybe like balloons. I don't know if it looks like balloons because it's very stabilized and it's moving in kind of one cluster without like wiggling around. Mm -hmm. But I did get a, so, but obviously I was roasted. As soon as I showed the videos, <laughs> I was roasted because they can't, because I understand it's vulnerable. Yeah. Being in here, being in my space, yeah. being here with me in here is vulnerable. I appreciate being invited in. I do, I do, but I'm also See? got. I'm, but I'm a true, sarcasm. I'm a true friend, so always going to tell you the truth. All right, I'll take it. I'm I'll take gonna, it. I'm always going to tell you the truth. I'm not going to patronize you. Thank you. I'm always going to treat you with respect. But, <laughs> but, but I'm not sold on the jellyfish. All right. Well, this is a response I got again from one of our boys overseas. I'm an active duty intelligence specialist, and I can confirm the jellyfish vid is legit. The video got passed around different MFV PED cells to see if anyone could figure out what it was, and everyone I've talked to can't figure it out. When Jeremy Corbell showed it, it was the first time I saw the video outside of Skiff. Couple interesting <laughs> things I noticed as an analysis in this just video. Just fucking throwing out all these acronyms. Yep. ALB, CPT, Dude, Skiff. That's how these guys fucking legit. <laughs> <laughs> right? This way, the more acronyms, the more true it is. Okay. All right, here we go. A couple of things I noticed as an analyst about the video. Number one, it's like an hour long, the original, including when it goes in the water. So they saw it go in the water. So this thing was tracked for a significant amount of mission time. Two, the texture changes on the IR sensor. Swish, swish, swish. The texture changes on the IR sensor considerably. So there's temperature fluctuations throughout the video. What IR being infrared? Yes. Could it possibly be the sun hitting the balloons? I don't know. There's some minor changes in the physical shape of the object as it flies through the air, but not in the manner you'd see in something amorphous like a sheet or a bunch of balloons. <laughs> Number four, if you look really close at the tentacles of the jellyfish, they seem rigid, yes. like mechanical arms or an antennae array. Other than that, I have no clue what this thing is. I just know it came from a legitimate DOD asset and received a lot of attention. So it's interesting. It is interesting. I mean, if I were to compare these creatures to anything, it, it has a very world of the worlds feel to it. Well, it's very, um, it's of the... Are these things <laughs> an object that is intelligently piloted from far away? Or is this another example of a thing that that's the thing? Bio or, do you, or is it like bioelectronics? Something. Yeah. That it is a, it is that, that what you're seeing in a jellyfish UEP or what we see with like orbs and stuff like that is that there's not a little guy in there driving it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> He's not doing that. Uh -huh. All right. But that it's the thing itself. Right. It's something. 
Okay. Or the idea of also had this, con- someone was, uh, was reading this the other day, but this concept that like we are here in a dimensionality, in this dimensionality, or we're here in this dimension. But the shit that travels through, it's like they walk into a room at another place and then they're here, mm-hmm. but they're not physically here. It's like a mirror image of something from another dimension that's like popping in our dimension. It's like they walk into, they can explore us from there, wherever they're at. Okay. They can explore us easily without getting here because it's an interdimensional thing. We just don't understand. Gotcha. So this could be something <laughs> like uh, the. <laughs> I mean, you know, I, 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 we I, demand to be taken seriously. I, what do you want from me? <laughs> you want me to lie to you? You want me to be somebody else? But what? The, but you showed two jellyfish videos. One, yes. one was the uh, the thermal imaging video over the in military which, base. Over the military base, in which it's moving very, very quickly. It's moving yes. very fast. And then you showed one. In which the, that one was not as good. <laughs> the one from the Spanish documentary the one, was not quite the, as good. And let, let me say it's, it's the one in which the jellyfish is slowly floating uh, through a neighborhood, through a parking lot. Yes, uh, and is largely ignored by everything uh, around it. That's different. Yes, except I feel for like e- the, except for the automatic light that went on when it went by. It's closer to balloons. Yes, I will admit it. But at the same time, is it not interesting that it looks just like? The other fucking thing it looks similar. It came out. It looks just like it, <laughs> and it looks and it came out, and it's it is very similar. So yeah. that's why I included it. Is that like these were entirely entirely separate things sure. that when they were years apart. So that's why that one, the video I showed, was from 2018. Mm-hmm. So why is it? It's the same object. You know, that's interesting. And that's the other thing that I wonder about is that if it is a biological entity, why is it trucking so fast? It's got a place to be. Yeah, I guess so. Got to be a haircut. Is it? The- <laughs> <laughs> Look at it. Right, obviously, it's a mess. Yeah. He needs to get a haircut. He needs to go get its like, limes, lines done. Yeah. Do you think there's any sort of like truck to the uh, the theory that Earth is like kind of an interdimensional highway? That we are just like one feel, stop on like a, like basically we're a stop on a wormhole. I feel like we all are. Aren't we? <laughs> Every day is a winding road. That's what Cheryl Crow was talking about. Yeah, exactly. I, uh, it's <laughs> funny. The, the, every, all of us are on an interdimensional highway. That's it. Always. Every day, bro. Every day. Her, when she was banging Lance Armstrong, yeah. she knew what was going on. Forgot about that. What did Cheryl Crow know <laughs> about the juicing? Um, but I, I find any theory that puts humans at the very center of it, like, egotistical. I get that. I feel like anything that's like, Earth's a special garden yeah. that every alien, every alien that's ever been wants to be here. Mm. I just think that we are, we are conscious. And because of that, we experience these other things. And that maybe that there's still too, I, I get in my, my, my head, because we don't understand consciousness and we know that it's some, we know we have clues that it's remote. Yeah. Is that maybe it's one of those things that all consciousness and, and things that experience and have consciousness like experience each other. Right. And that we are all like intrinsically tied remotely because we all are thinking creatures. And then maybe it's just kind of why we're all we're like loosely tied and that they show up back and forth because we are we, we are another opinion of reality making consciousness within the universe. And it could be that in the past we were much more closely tied to that consciousness and that sure. we were able to see things simpler back organisms. We, we were able to see things uh, much, we were able to connect with those sorts of, you know, thoughts, beings, whatever. And they were much, zooming and they were everywhere. Yeah. And then maybe when, as we've gotten more technologically advanced or societies become more complicated Electricity. and stuff like that, like what that does is sort of like Focus us more here on these quote unquote my bills. <laughs> oh, I have to go to my dialysis. You know what I mean? And I not know, thinking about life. I you know, know what I mean? I, there, as a whole on a, on a galactic scale. I was watching this uh, fucking great uh, document, this BBC documentary series the other day that was the, it's kind of, it's like the sequel to uh, that book that we used for our Black Plague series, The the Time Traveler's Guide to Medieval Europe. Great book. Uh, they also, he wrote a sequel called The Time Traveler's Guide to Victorian Europe. Ooh, uh, and I love it because that other book was great. Yeah, and he also made like a three-part documentary series for BBC called The Time Traveler's Guide to Victorian Europe. And oh, it's, shit. it's fucking great. Ooh, I'll watch that. You'll love it. But That's good nerd the, shit. The first episode is like, imagine you're a peasant and you go back, man, I think that we have much more time to think 
and hang out. I think <laughs> you're people right. Did, then people did better because it's like the way he describes it is just this never ending struggle to survive. This never ending struggle of just like always having to do one thing or another. Oh, but on the other hand, they did have time to things like, because if you were a peasant in Victorian England, you would be spending much of your time in a dark hut with <laughs> only one window and no candles, no light. And he's because just candles, delighted by it. Because like, candles oh. were highly expensive yes. and something for the nobles. So you would spend much of your life in darkness. That's one of those when you when everyone says like, oh my God, 2024 sex. And it's just been like, we're fine. <laughs> you know what I mean? It used to be much worse. If you were lucky, you would own two forks, a ladle, a pot and maybe a cot to sit upon. Oh my God, you slept Scots. on an earthen floor. <laughs> yeah, he's been was... like, is your studio apartment look good now? <laughs> <laughs> but now it, it, it yeah. is hard. because Maybe they did have more time to think. Maybe, yeah, because yeah. you just, <laughs> what else do you do all day but ruminate? Like yeah. you just sit Once and wait for the coals to burn. Once the sun goes down. And That's you're, it. And you're also in this room and it's like, and also the hut would be constantly filled with smoke because you have a concept. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you'd have to go outside. Yeah, the, and you'll look at the stars. And you just have a little hole up top oh, that, yeah. that lets all the smoke out. But it, I would, I'd recommend, I think it's on like the BBC Select. That's fascinating. Uh, it's really, really fucking good. But yeah, that's, yeah, you know, we he don't want to go on, back. He goes off on shit. For like, I, I know I, we don't shouldn't talk about it. I promised I no, wouldn't. No, you're fine. No, we're allowed to. Yeah, we I know got the mandate. I know we we're told. I know we got the mandate, but I promised I wouldn't. Yeah, sure. Uh, but but that is true. But we we are, how do you say it? Predisposed to be obsessed with shit <laughs> because we talked about it during the Black Plague series. Because as humans, it's all, in the book Sapiens. I keep that keeps coming up. I know it's very hacky. I think a lot of people. It's like this this thing that keeps coming up with a lot of people. But I, it's just fascinating because there was a line in a book that kind of like hit me. They were like, you know, the movement from foraging to society uh, helped nothing. It's helped. It was an absolute bulldozer yeah. to all animal and human life. But we can thank them, but no one can tell them, like, you know, our modern society is built on the backs of all of these people who died bad <laughs> in, a, in a, the switch from foraging to industrialization. Yeah. So we're just like, we get to go, thanks, mm -hmm. you know, because we got this shit. You yeah. know I mean, I got, I got my cold brew. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, a bunch of hats. Yeah, I get to complain like, my monitors aren't right. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> like, yeah, no, we all get to complain about bullshit. Yes. Uh, but yeah, life was far, far harder. But, you know, as far as the, uh, you know, not being able to see the shit that we used to see, I still stand by my uh, my view that electricity has fucked up a lot of paranormal activity. I just, and, I, 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 and it's that fucking fear that I have that, you know, souls do leave the body. And they get destroyed in the but, shredding machine of Wi-Fi. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Technically, we, you're heading we, into... You don't be be careful. I'm not getting enough, gets into David Ike territory. I'm not getting a 5G territory. I'm not even talking about Wi-Fi. I'm just talking about the electricity that it's around <laughs> us always. Yeah, yeah, it's just like yeah, it's about you going to heaven. Like you, you're like, oh, I finally know. And it's, 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 <laughs> <laughs> you're just like blasted to hell. You didn't know. <laughs> or you just disintegrated. Your soul just disintegrates. <laughs> like you were just about to see. You just saw like a paradise of your your perfect world. Yeah. You're about to go to, and, and then, then you just caught in power. <laughs> Lines like a fucking kite. <laughs> Jellyfish UAP. <laughs> Just like one of those. And that's yeah. what they are. And that's what They're they trying are. to be like, we never die. Yeah. We get stuck here. <laughs> That'd be incredible. It would be. Live from your grave. All right. You want to get some true crime? No, I want to do. Or let's do you want to do this mystery. true crime or mystery? Let's okay, do the let's mystery. Do the mystery. Now, this got sent in. This story first got sent in about a week and a half ago from a listener. That is, I'm not saying, I don't remember if they are just, they just were friendly or they know one of the people that are involved in this story. This is an, I, it's, how do you put it? Information's coming in. Yeah. We don't know a heck of a lot, but from what we do know, it's an extremely weird set of circumstances and we don't really, we, I mean, you know, I feel like there is an, an Occam's razor mm -hmm. explanation that makes it like, it's entirely not fun. Yeah. <laughs> or then, or else we figure out. We'll, we'll see if we and uh, we'll see where it goes. Now, I don't like how the New York Post immediately says it's Kansas City Chiefs fans <laughs> because it does Why? feel like a Travis Kelsey, Taylor Swift style <laughs> trying to get the Kansas City juice onto the story. It might get a little bit of Kansas City juice into the story, but I think that having the Kansas City Chiefs fans in the headline, what did Patrick Mahomes know? 
<laughs> what did he know? He was too busy winning. He's good. I know he's the best. He wins too. He wins too much. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. Eventually, he'll a fall will come. Detroit, Detroit. We this all is want the year. We're, this no, is we're the Detroit. Year. We're, 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 yeah, yeah. I don't know how we got masculine here. Yeah, <laughs> in the middle of this. But the can't. But I, I appreciate that because it says Kansas City Chiefs fans, you know, and it talks about the playoffs. And if you're a football fan, if you you know watch the games, then you know that the game between the Kansas City Chiefs and the Miami Dolphins last it was weekend was huge. Well, it was cold. Yes, it was very, it was very cold. Four below with a twenty degree with a wind chill of negative twenty. Yeah, it killed so, the. Dolphins. So immediately I know, yeah, the Dolphins couldn't use their fucking hands. Yes. But it, I immediately know, like, okay. Super cold. I know that it was right. super cold that night. All right, so here are the details. Um, the bodies of David Harrington, 37, Ricky Johnson, 38, and Clayton McGinney, 36, were found in the backyard of an unnamed man's house. They were not named the man because they're not giving, they're not yet handling, giving him any criminal charges. We don't know where it's going to head to. But they came over to see the playoff game on January 7th. They went to go see with their buddy. They hung out. And as far as the guy who owns the house knows, they left the house that night, according to him. They were then found two days later. They sent a missing, but they wanted to do a welfare check because they were like, well, they went to go to the, to see the game and then they never came back. To the point where one of their loved ones broke into the house because they went to call the guy. The guy was not picking up the house. They were knocking on the fucking door. The guy wasn't answering the door. So they broke into the basement and as they were breaking into the house, they discovered their three bodies of these, these men were frozen to death in the backyard. One was on the back porch. Two were laying down in the yard. And this is where it gets really fucking weird because the guy then finally comes out. Apparently, like, they had been calling for weeks, getting, trying to get the police involved. Finally, the police show up. They knock on the door because it takes 48 hours. I think it's like it's 48 hours or it's 72 hours. I forget what it is that you have to wait. I think it's taken down to four. I think that I think is it's that kind stopped. Of, I, I, I think it's stopped for the most part. And I think it's also a state to state thing. And I think it's also um, a agency to agency thing. I, I think police officers can kind of use their discretion. It's not like a hard and fast rule. Yes. But I think they use their discretion where it's like if somebody disappears and if somebody disappears with well, yeah. a history, California has no specific time period before you wait. Yeah. I think it's state to state. Yes. And also, like, if someone has a history of disappearing a lot, then it's like, okay, we'll wait 72 hours. But if somebody is like, okay, they come home every night at 8 o'clock, no, then there's no, and they're, and Call it's the fucking cops. 7 p.m. the next day, like, yeah. The, 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 cops. the cops will get involved. Yes. Uh, so, a guy comes out, and first of all, they said that he, he arrived, the police knock on the door, he opens up the door in his underpants and he had a glass of wine. An empty glass of An wine. An empty glass of wine. And he says, I don't know. These guys, you know, they came. He's like, they were all like apparently as thick as thieves. These are very, very close group of friends. And he says that we came, we partied. Last thing I know is I said goodbye to them because their cars were still there. Two cars were parked down the street, way on the street parking. There was no cars in the driveway. So there's no way to know out front that there were people inside the house. Mm -hmm. He says that he could not hear all the banging and the calling because he had his headphones on and there was a loud fan going at the same time. Now... <laughs> I, that is the most <laughs> fake thing I've heard, right? That's fake. But I don't know. I don't know. Because I do know they got together. Big game for the Chiefs. Huge. Right? I could see getting hammered mm -hmm. in the house, right? Maybe he doesn't want to say it because his buddy's froze to death yeah. and he can't deal with it. But so he literally like just was gone, right? I know one time my father came home from work. Um... And I'm not going to say, I don't think he had, I don't know if he had drank. He'd, he had a long night that he had worked. We, as a family, were locked out of the house in the pool. Like me, my sister, he came in. He said hi to us and he went upstairs to go to sleep. He closed the back door. Didn't understand he had locked the back door. We were stuck back there. To the point where my mom had to jump. That We were knocking, bump, screaming. He couldn't hear nothing, right? He was yeah. just dead to the world. So my mom had to climb the fence to our neighbor's house went over to where the fireman's house was right down the street, got a big fireman's ladder and it put it up <laughs> against the back of the house. This is completely real. Climbed up to the second floor where my dad was asleep and pounded on the, the, the window right next to where my father was sleeping to which he answered by pulling out his gun and um, literally <laughs> opening up the door and pulling his gun out. And he was going, and our neighbor was like, no, 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 no. 
know, as if we were all like, Daddy, don't shoot him, Daddy. Like down with And it was really funny at the afterwards. Um, yeah. But you know, you can be dead, dead asleep, maybe yeah. a little inebriated and you don't know. But what I find weird of all of this shit, no sign from these three guys trying to get in the house. No, they didn't try to, they weren't freezing nothing. They didn't wake up like, they, they they didn't try to get in, mm-hmm. right? They they either fell where they stood. Now we're, that's why the families of the dead people are now saying straight up, like no one's investigating this properly. Yeah. No one is who because they're d- basically right now the cops have doubled down and said they have frozen to death. We don't see any outward signs of anything untowards in terms of a homicide. They're just calling it a death investigation because, and I don't know why. I don't know whether or not it's because if they were poisoned, we would have some more of evidence of that like you would maybe see some frozen vomit maybe there's like physical signs of distress that would have been more apparent if they were poisoned i'm not sure but it's really fucking crazy to think that you would be that cold like let's say you did get locked out in the backyard Mm -hmm. you could have went anywhere like you could have walked away like how drunk were you like to the point where you would stumble out and just pass out onto the into the backyard that's crazy to me too like you're 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 kansas city local you know it's super cold. Who's going out there to do that? Like, like when do you get trapped? And then, like, let's say that then happened. So your buddies go out there and they freeze to death and they don't do anything to save themselves. And then I guess you wake up and you see it. Because one thing about the guy who owned the house is he had a bunch of dogs. Mm-hmm. So they were, like, trying to let him out. Like, you would have let the dogs out at some point. And then you would have seen your buddies frozen, like in True Detective, yeah. which is fucking scary as fuck. What if he walks the dogs out front? Maybe. Yeah, very possible. Yeah, but they, like I don't know whether or not there's a ring cam. This is all the kind of stuff we're going to find out, like as more and evidence evidence comes. But that's what I find really interesting. I know that hyperthermia can come fast. May I give an explanation? What my Please. possible yeah, explanation? Occam's, you're, this is the Occam's razor. I'm trying. I'm trying to Occam's razor this a little bit. So first of all, Kansas City's average winter temperature in January is high of 39, low of 21. Ooh. Not that cold. I mean, that's, that's pretty, cold. I mean, that's pretty standard. Like Texas, that's you cold know, for like me. Where, where I grew up, 39, 21. That yeah, that's like that's pretty. That's pretty standard. The types of cold that they had, that shit happens like once a decade. Like yeah. it's very rare. But probably going to happen more often now. Yeah. It's going to happen a lot of, more often now. Yeah. It's going to happen all, every winter. Uh, but it's negative four degrees. Uh, and with the wind chill in Kansas City that night, it was negative 20. Shit. And in those temperatures, like people, to, like people in the Midwest, like people in Wisconsin, and all that, like they take that shit seriously because you can, in temperatures that low, you can die going out and getting your mail. Like if you're not dressed properly, if you don't have the right, if you don't take the right precautions, you can die in that type of temperature very quickly. That's number one. They're not used to it. They don't know how dangerous it is. And it's nighttime. Number two. Big game. They're drunk. They're drunk. And the thing is about drinking is that drinking gives you the illusion of being, of being warm. warm when in fact your body temperature is lower. Yes. It says it takes about 20 minutes. Well, yeah. Really, okay. Hyperthermia can develop in as little as five minutes in temperatures of minus 50. I mean, if you're not dressed properly. Uh, at 30 below zero, hyperthermia can set in in about 10 minutes. And... We don't know how well they were dressed. We don't. But I would imagine that they're probably not going to be wearing, like, Mount Everest clothing. No. No, 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 no. Yeah, they're not. It's just interesting. And so for me, it's quite possible that these guys, their buddy passes out on the couch, passes out dead cold. But they They were outside. They they were on the grass. They go outside for a smoke. You know, maybe to smoke a joint, maybe to, maybe to smoke a cigarette, something like that. They not they the door locks behind them. They're trying to get in. They're trying to get in. They're knocking. They're knocking. Their keys might be inside in their jacket pocket. They don't go. have the keys to their car. This is a brand new interview with the guy that had the house. I actually just found this. The fact that his friend's cards were still outside. He only learned that they died when the fiance of one of them broke into his house, according to the man. Um, he says that he thought that maybe... They returned while he was asleep to hang out in the living room. Maybe they didn't want to go to a bar or hang out somewhere else. Um, and he said he worked from home with his two dogs. His two dogs were at his father's house. Mm-hmm. So they weren't there. For two days, the families of the victims say they bombarded Willis with phone calls and Facebook messages. But he says that the last thing he saw at the very end was he was just them breaking into the house. Yeah. But we have not. Yeah. Because his attorney is the, the guy who owned the house is straight up saying, I did not have anything to do with this. Of course. Yeah. He's trying to figure out what to do. Because I. 
I, I don't know if he did. I don't think that he did. I think that, but we, we're going to find out everything once they do the autopsies on the bodies. Yeah, yeah, they'll they'll see if there's any sort of poison or anything like that. But I really do think they got locked out and they couldn't. <gasps> and they they got well, locked out. Why would out they and not have in. broken in the fucking windows? Or, literally, why would they not have? If you know, you're but, gonna freeze it. Out. But I don't know if you know. Like, I don't know if you know you're going to freeze today. I don't know. Yeah. And I, I don't And how, and that's the thing is how drunk are they? I, mean, I don't know. And it's they, playoff drunk. Yeah. It's, it's Seriously, like, it, playoff it's, drunk. It's playoff drunk. But and, I will find out. We will definitely find out. There is now a GoFundMe for one of the funerals, which sure. is really, really and sad. And my heart goes out to the family. Uh, utterly. Of like, I'm, no. not, I'm not saying that, you know, that their grief well, or their, their incredulousness no. about all this is like, it's stupid or anything like that. Of course not. Like, you want to know what the fuck happened. Of course. You absolutely want to know what happened. Well, simply the fact that it happened so quickly, and these are people that have lived their whole lives in a, a temperature they're going to get cold. You know what I mean? Like in a place that has a, a hardcore winter. Mm -hmm. And the fact that like the guy didn't answer the door for two days is super weird. Yeah. And the, and the fact that they just it's just the way their bodies were found, and the and that they did not even attempt to break back into the house. Because yeah. I I mean and. Because how drunk do you get? These are guys that go see football every week with their buddies. Maybe they also got were really high. They might have gone Maybe. out. They might have gone out back to smoke a joint. Who knows? I mean, that's because you ask, you know, because when you're at these sorts of things, you're at somebody's house. Does you everybody go pass out at the same time? I, well, that's the thing is that Does the everyone guys, literally go. You don't the guys are found you. in different places. No, two of them were standing. were laying next to each other in the field. Maybe they were laying down to look at the stars. What is this? <laughs> <laughs> is this the end of a Wes Anderson film? They might have. I mean, they might have. The have you and I, have we ever, at the end of a night of drinking, even back in the day, ever sat and laid in negative 20 temperatures? No. To look at the stars? To, would because you Because we only ever got drunk in bars and apartments in Brooklyn. But I'm just saying. Have in you ever, Queens. Have you sat with another man? And laid down with him in a field to look at the stars like you were both in Fievel. <laughs> <laughs> when I was younger, yeah. When? Like when I was in high school, college, you're out but there. But that's different. Yeah. These are 39-year-old men. Sometimes the magic just don't go away. No, bro, Sometimes the wonder just don't go away. You know what I know about the in 39? It sucks to lay on the fucking ground. <laughs> that's what I know. It hurts your back. I don't know. They might they might have gotten stoned and had a moment of joy that ended up in their death. Absolute garbage. <laughs> that's I don't why know. you never do that. I don't know. what, but Okay, so that's the Occam's Razor. Yeah. explanation is that they went outside the door locked behind them and the cold overtook them before they were able to do anything about it. Yes. That's the Occam's razor explanation. Yeah. Your explanation. The Wendigo. <laughs> it's that easy. <laughs> Wendigo came to Kansas City. The Kansas came City to, Wendigo. He came to see the fucking, the hubbub about, again, Travis Kelsey, Taylor Swift, Blake Lively was there. Mm -hmm. They all want to see her. They all want to see Patrick Mahomes. If it happened to the three of them, that would have been interesting. <laughs> the Wendigo came for Taylor Swift, Travis Kelsey. And obviously it would do the horrendous effects to the Kansas City Chiefs offensive line. Yeah. But at the same time, fucking Blake Lively mysteriously frozen to death. That's your show. <laughs> it's fucking awesome. You know okay. I mean? I'd, I'd love to show. see. Right? I'd, I'd what show. happened to Blake Lively? What happened to Blake Lively? Whatever, hap whatever in the world happened to Blake Lively. She's a popsicle now. And, you know, America's sweetheart. Now, she's a fucking fudgicle. <laughs> I didn't even know. I thought Blake Lively was a country music star. It's all the same. <laughs> I thought it was a man who sang Ryan, country music. Ryan, no. No. No? That's a woman. Blake Lively, huh? It's Ryan Reynolds. Right? Wife, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. She's beautiful. But but Blake Lively sounds like a man with a, an acoustic guitar wearing a hat talking about red solo cups. I hate to disappoint you. It's a mediocre actress. <laughs> Blake Shelton is who you're thinking Blake, of. Blake, I'm thinking of but, uh, Blake Shelton. But that's not Blake Shelton to me. That's Gwen Stefani's husband. That's right. Cheater. <laughs> how dare you? How dare you bring that's that up? The blind items. How much time has to pass? Or am I thinking about Gavin? Uh, they're with, all, they're all. They're all, yeah. They're yeah. all bad. Oh, when's Gwen going to get hers? When's Gwen going to get her prince? When is she? Well, she's, they, now they're happily married. Okay. They seem to be doing well. I'm looking for holes in that all the time, though. <laughs> <laughs> Live from your grave. You want? Let's do which one of these true crimes you want. All right. Well, before we do, so now we're gonna wait. More information is gonna come in. We're gonna find out more about the story. I'm gonna keep up on it.
Yeah, we're going to keep up on this story. We absolutely have to keep up on it. And and I know we we got a little thing coming as far as like, you know, updates on stories. We got a, we got a little thing coming, you know, a, 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 a new project in which we're going to revisit some stuff. But God damn, I want to talk about Natalia Grace so badly. I know. We're going to get into <laughs> Natalia. We're going to get into just, Natalia Grace. I just want everybody to know that like we're going to get into it. We're going to talk we're gonna about it. We're going to do a big blown out thing on I it. Because, a lot of opinions. Because... She talks like the daughter from National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, and but she's very. Uh, I feel extremely bad. I I issued my broad apology yeah. already to Natalia Grace. But there's a lot of shit going on in there. There's so much shit going and, on, and in we're there. gonna cover that yeah. because you know, because as soon as you reage somebody, you can't take it back. Yeah, it's so because the government has decided already. The fucking crazy that's one of those things about like we everybody makes fun of me maybe about the idea of like you know realities perception do the shit but you see this like hyper abstract concept of the government can tell you how old you are yeah and then boom you're that age legally nothing else you do nothing whatever you do you can't take it back because the government decided you're this age if that's not fucking a magic ritual i don't know what it is but you know what's good about that early social security benefits yeah because they've always been famously generous. Bright side. That's me. Yep. Always. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> towards yeah, think about it, Natalia. Retirement's coming up. <laughs> right? Re-age me. You get that 10 years early. We should re-age us. To uh, uh, 65. Oh, I want to be 53. Why? I don't know. It sounds nice. That's, I feel like. It sounds like a, it sounds like a peace, 53 sounds like a peaceful age. I feel like we get re-sexy in our 50s. I feel like that too. Right? 40s are kind of whatever. I think it's fun to be 40. Yeah. I mean, when you get back in your 50s, you're going to be like, people are going to be like, ooh, oh, wow. Man, look at him. You know what I mean? Take a second look at that guy. By your third divorce, right? Then you have braces, real braces. (laughs) Oh, you're, you're fucking just making me William H. Macy. (laughs) <laughs> That's all I have doing. so much love to give. <laughs> uh, all right, let's do the um the boy uh, man in the box. All right, the man in the box. A woman was charged with murder after the body of her son is discovered in a wooden box behind a false wall. This is a hardcore bitch. This woman is mean. According to a statement from the Gulfport Police Department on Facebook Sunday, and that's. Fucking horrible. Yep. Jerry Lynn Roby, 66, who also goes by the last name Israel. Israel. Is, <laughs> was arrested on Saturday and charged with one count of first degree murder. Police said they found the body of John Allen Gaither, 42, in a wooden box behind a false wall in her Gulfport home. Oh, yeah. It, it, it was hidden by the, the idea of a false wall. We've been talking about this. I want it real bad. Yeah, I've been talking about it a lot lately. I really want one, but I know that, you know, you should put your son in it. This woman. And him. We don't really know what happened. And this woman, it's not, it's not the only murder of this woman. So they, they went looking for the son. The missing reper- person's report came in. Couldn't find him. Is it like, oh, you know, she was just like, she, as they were talking to her, she became more and more uncooperative. They didn't learn that Roby had previously been arrested and convicted of murder in Florida in 1995. Um, which where she had, quote unquote, subsequently made several attempts to dump the deceased subjects at different locations throughout Florida, which means it was cut up into pieces. Oh, OK. I thought it was like that, like that scene in the Batman, uh, the Adam West Batman movie where he's trying to get rid of the bomb and he keeps going <laughs> place to place. It's like, oh, no, the nuns. Oh, no, the baby. Just, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Put it, putting him in a Burger King stall. Be like, ah, I don't know. This is not good. And then take it over, putting it in a car, rolling it through fucking like a, a drive through cleaning service. And you're like, ah, it's not working. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, it's only with several pieces. Um, yeah. And so they went in they, this, upon discovery of this information. Detectives obtained a search warrant. As soon as they got in there, she saw the cops. She just started jamming pills in her mouth. <laughs> and she started taking a bunch of pills. They had a tog tire and take her immediately to the fucking hospital because she tried to commit, commit suicide. And then they found the deceased body. This lady's fucking mean, mean, mean. And you can look in her face, too. She Oof. looks it. Oh, my God. She looks like the skeleton of a witch. Oh, God. She is so... It's the hair, and the, she does have a kind of a witch's nose. Oh, yeah. And she is very... She just looks like somebody who'd... A multiple murderer. Oh, yeah. No, according uh, to uh, Ducre, who I believe is one of the police officers that are involved in this, Roby attempted to cover up the crime by writing notes to family members posing as her son. Sup, bros? It's me, Derek. <laughs> 
<laughs> Sup, dudes? What's going on? How's it hanging? Low and to the left? Ha ha. Know how that is. So anyways, I'm alive. <laughs> <laughs> this is the one that really gets me. Police said multiple homemade wooden boxes were found in her home and inside her garage. So does that mean multiple that, fucking deaths? Does that well does that mean that she made many attempts before she finally got the box right? And so she had been planning the death of her son for a long time? Or do each of those boxes have a name an, an associated? Yeah. A name. Like it's like, did she have a box, a person for every box? Yeah, this one's for Biden. <laughs> This one's for, you know, it's like it's all different from this one's for Charlie Murphy. You already got him. This is for Secretary of State I, Blinken. Blinken. <laughs> um, I, I wonder, I actually also, in my mind, first thing I think of is, well, yeah, I do have a collection of wooden boxes. And it seems my son, in his endless curiosity, <laughs> has got himself trapped in one, sadly. That I, I must have just, and I didn't hear him yelling. And we were, we had a pot burst. You see, this is as you start to do. And then you'd be like, how you made this idea of being like, you see how easy it is to trip into one of the boxes. <laughs> and if just so happened, the lid came closed down upon, and then you, the hypothermia sets in at negative, a negative 10 hypothermia sets in very quickly, mm -hmm. you know, and then she starts. You never know. You never know. And then she just ends like that. He that's Mr. Beaned his way to death. Where do I put my boxes? Behind the wall. Where do you put your boxes? I don't have a wall to put them behind. Honestly, a lot of times they just stay on the floor. Yeah, that's true. You know, or they go where they have to go. Or I open up the box, take out the contents of the box, fold up the box. That's right. And then you put it in recycling. I actually view more of those little boxes that she's made as caskets. <laughs> yeah, they're not boxes. Because there's wooden boxes. Yeah, but caskets are wooden boxes. They're crates. Yeah. Because unless you're Indiana Jones, I don't know why you need multiple wooden crates inside of your home that is unoccupied. Just a bunch of wooden crates. I think they're human-sized boxes. As yes, well. that's yeah, what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, they're, they're definitely crates. human. Yeah, homemade wooden boxes. Yeah, like what? What, they, what were they before? Except for you're creating a corpse farm, <laughs> you know, like or an amateur cemetery. Yeah, yeah, amateur cemetery. That's what it is. An unlicensed graveyard. An unlicensed graveyard. Mm -hmm. Oh, John Wayne Gacy, always a German. All right, here we go. And then we got another really fucked up story. This is a good one because we all have therapists here. Some of us, multiple. Yeah. And this. What do we know about therapists? We've said this before. Love my therapists. Love mine. Plural. Love them. However, they're all nuts. Well, you don't know their inner lives. You don't want to know your therapist's inner life. I believe my therapist is incredibly sane. But I, there, she had, there's, there's, many, there's much evidence to say that she's an incredibly sane, sweet, caring, kind person. It's called presentation. <laughs> but it's nice, though, that they, she does it. Right? Yeah. Because, again, lie to me. Yeah. Don't bring me in. Let's just imagine everything's fucking iry. Okay? <laughs> but this guy shows that sometimes if you want to be an expert in anger management, what you got to do is be king and lord of anger. Because <laughs> it's really important. Because how else will you understand anger unless you yourself are the angriest man to ever live? Everything about this says... See in red. It really like every, like every action is just seeing red, not thinking about your actions, not thinking about the consequences, just fucking going from action to action, not thinking about who's watching you, nothing. This nothing. is just seeing red. This is an open murder in the middle of the street <laughs> by a therapist. Now, a therapist specializing in quote unquote anger management, gun down man in street, stuffed body and car trunk. He's a 46 year old therapist by the name of Travis McBride, looking guilty <laughs> in his mugshot. He's he kind of does the, he does a little bit of the innocent being like, mm, oh me, you think I might have messed up. <laughs> um, but he shot a man multiple times by the name of Clinton Dorsey, who was an, a homeless man that uh, apparently they got into a conflict. Now, according to uh, witnesses, they saw Travis McBride shoot this man, empty a clip into a, a body. In the middle of the street. In the middle of the street. Shoot, shoots him, he falls down. He walks up. He finishes the clip into the guy's body. And then, look around. <laughs> like he's in a heist movie. Drags the body and puts it in the trunk of his car. No. And, just, and then he's cleaning up. Like, he tried to clean up the street. No, no, no. First, he dragged the body into the woods. And he's like, ah... <laughs> Uh, everybody's then, seeing this. Then once he gets the body out of you, then Stop, he Travis, goes. Then get the <laughs> fucking shit to fucking gather, Travis. Then, You're a doctor. 
doctor. Then he goes and cleans up the blood spot on the pavement. Ah, then he goes back. Everywhere. Then he goes back to ah. the woods and puts it in his trunk in front. Every single action has multiple witnesses. Yes, they're all watching. See in red. They're literally all watching him go do this stuff. And so he says, he says that the the man threatened his dogs, which I understand. Okay. I'm very protective of Georgie. Very protective. I'm not going to empty a clip into you, though. Nope. You know, not just for saying it. <laughs> no. You know, just the threat. You know what I mean? What are no. you going to do? You know? Now, e even if, like, you hurt my dog, I'm not going to kill you. I'll beat the fuck out of you. Yeah. I, I will physically harm you, but yeah. I'm not going to kill a man it's over just, a dog. So she came. I'm not John Wick. He's not. He's not. I'm but not. he's got the fucking body for it. I do. I've been working out. Hmm. <laughs> now, these guys came. The woman, a witness who was scared of McBride, um, said that McBride had come to her home about seven or eight the previous night looking for this man, Clint Dorsey, who she described as a well-known homeless man who lived in the woods across the street from her house. Now, McBride told the woman that Dorsey had done something to harm his dogs. Um, but the thing is that um, she saw him. He was packing then. And then the next day when she saw him shoot eight to nine shots into a body, uh, she got really, really scared. And so she immediately called the police saying that this man has gone. Blind. And she not only was he trying to hose the ground down, I guess grabbing a hose out of a front yard of another house, he started closing <laughs> the ground down. He then was digging around looking for the shell casings. This is a long time. Yeah. To open, I mean, openly. You might as well have sent a Zoom invite <laughs> to your murder <laughs> where everybody is watching from their homes yeah. as you're like, it's goddamn shell case. <laughs> you know, these nine millimeter shells are smaller than you think. You know, like people going through. He said that he dumped a bunch of shit into a, a nearby car wash. Um, and it was just like the fact that he dumped them in the fucking, he dumped them in the truck and then just parked the truck. And it's like, <laughs> 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 so. you know what I mean? Like he sits, in, he sits inside his truck. And we're like, okay, Travis, <laughs> we might have, <laughs> might have gone a little farther. But now what we're going to do here is remember the present is a gift. That's what's called the present. <laughs> we need to really think about how our goals are going to be aligned with our actions. And how did murdering that homeless man affect us today? What we want to do is number one, obviously made us late for several of our appointments. <laughs> and number two, make amends. You got to, I got to go make amends. So let me just go, let me go to the trunk. I'm sorry. Clint. <laughs> I'm sorry, but he dumped him in there, and then they just found it in there. Well, he dumped it in. The, he dumped him in there, and he just parked it in the car wash parking lot and left the car. And then police very quickly tracked down the car and opened up the trunk. It's like, there's the guy. Very much a dead man. They're very there. much a dead man in there. Yeah. Yeah. Nissan hatchback. Yeah. Great commercial for that. <laughs> uh, but that is, uh, yeah, it's a fucked up story. Yeah. I, again, you just never know. And I love the fact that they're all like his areas of expertise. Yeah. Or PTSD, anger management, um, and depression. Yep. According to his practice's website, which is still up. Yep. Oh, yeah. Very much so. Starting point mental health. Ooh, great LLC. service. Yeah, people love it. Oh, wow. Travis is, has been able to help. You. Okay, yeah. Wow. Behind every successful woman is herself. That's one of the signs. That's I'm nice. Doing. It's one of these. An increase in self-awareness is a major step towards better self-management. Being more honest and rational with yourself during a tough time may not encourage positive thinking in that moment but will certainly encourage personal growth and more positive outcome. It is important to have at least one loving, trustworthy, wise person in your life to give you constructive feedback. Listen to their counsel, implement, and have faith. Hey, Barry, what if I told you, um, <laughs> hey, yeah, you know how I always said that whole thing about that wise person, you gotta, you know, talk about the shit you do? Yeah, yeah all right. Oh, I fucking shot a guy in the chest nine times in the, in the middle of the streets, a bunch of witnesses. What should I do? <laughs> Wipe them all out? Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. yeah, no loose ends. You're right, thanks. <laughs> cool. I just wanted to be sure. I, you know, I'm going to kill this neighborhood. All right? Uh, yeah, it's the entire neighborhood. I'm going to kill the entire neighborhood. <laughs> oh, he does have a really cute dog, though. He does. Yeah. Who's now an accomplice to murder. <laughs> and I feel like that dog now needs to think about what, because that dog helped nothing and no one. Look yeah. at that. That's therapy dog. I love therapy dogs. Yeah, so that do is I. A, that therapy dog did nothing. Oh, that dog's it's like the exact same size. It looks exactly like Georgie. It's very similar in shape to Georgie. And guess what? It did nothing. It's got a little bone in its mouth and it did nothing to help. Georgie would have done nothing as no. well. No. She does nothing. Dogs. 
Dogs are they're beautiful. Yeah, they're perfect creatures. I love, I love my dog so yes. much. Great little cuddle bear, but and that's uh, otherwise useless. They're not stopping your murder. Absolutely, movie. unless it's a useless animal. Fucking Rottweiler. Yeah. <laughs> right. I have two dogs that are a liability. Yeah. Right. And I love mm -hmm. my dogs. Yeah. But they will slow us down. Yeah. Georgie provides love yes. and entertainment. Yes. That's all. it. That's it. I provide the safety. Yeah. That's uh, bad for everyone. Yeah. As do I. Because I'm weak. We're not give weak. in. Yeah. Well, I mean, you would give up pretty fast. Well, if you torture me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know I mean, I'm not going to fucking, I'm going to tell you where the studio is. Yeah. I'm going to tell you where you live. Sure. Yeah. I, and I'd understand. Yeah. Yeah. But I'd tell you ahead of time. Yeah, I'd call I'd be you like, up. they're coming to you. They're, yeah, I'd be, I'd be, they're coming, they're coming grab the axe. They're coming to yourself. Yeah. 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 Well, let's get some letters. <laughs> Alaska. Alaska. Now, well, I wanted to get into some Alaska material. My buddy, Billy Wayne Davis, the, ma the very, very funny comedian, is currently in Alaska right now. Great guy. And he is talking about how, number one, it's super fucking, it's very surreal being there. Because of how it gets dark so early and all that kind of shit. And also, they are, he's talking about staying in the, uh, he's staying in the hotel that we talked about. Oh, cool. The, the, his the historic. Yeah, the historic. Yeah. And so he's going to give me a report about if he sees anything. He stayed alone in a hotel in Juneau and he said it was scary as fuck. They, and, and, and one of the big notes that came back after we did our Alaska Triangle episode was talking about how the hauntings in Alaska are fucking real. Yeah. Um, but a lot, these are really, a couple of these, I just want to talk about these two because these are fucking great. So number one, this is, a, I want, this is the phenomenon that is across the world is having a Jesus character show up. But I like to show up in Alaska. So this is in the spring of 1993. My punk skater friends and I would frequent downtown to find spots to skate and hang out. This is in Alaska. It was Anchorage. One Friday, an outsider, seemingly plucked from the SoCal surf scene, rolled up to us in the vintage skateboard. Unfamiliar to our tightened skate community, he claimed to have skated all the way from Fairbanks, a perplexing 360-mile journey. Our skepticism grew, but we invited him to join our weekend escapades. The mystery deepened as this nomadic stranger, devoid of a backpack or visible wallet, effortlessly conjured food and cannabis, single, simply out, seemingly out of the thin air. Apparently, the weed in Alaska is good. Yeah, 1993. That's, uh, I mean, just being able to have weed all the time in 1993. Weed burrito, man. <laughs> I'm the fucking stoner genie. It's incredible. Around five or six, he simply stated, a nonchalantly providing for every need, he became an integral part of our group from Friday afternoon into the early evenings of Sunday. And around 5 or 6 p.m., he simply stated that he had to go home. And he rolled off into the night. His abrupt departure that evening only added to the intrigue. Puzzled by his origins, my friends and I eagerly sought answers. Weeks later, encountering some other skaters from Fairbanks, we eagerly inquired about our elusive acquaintance, detailing his appearance, movements, and uncanny ability to materialize necessities. To our bewilderment, the Fairbanks skaters disclaimed any knowledge of such an individual. The enigma persisted prompting us to dub him Skate Jesus, a mystical figure who skated into our lives, leaving behind an unsolved riddle of origin and purpose. Very interesting. Is this upon your uh, your claim that Jesus is a cryptid? I, I still think that Jesus was a, uh, an, a creation mm -hmm. of the Roman state. <laughs> <laughs> now, this is another one. This is a good, 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 good one. This is a true story about how the United States military tested chemical weapons on live primates. And how in doing so, they might have inadvertently created a group of monsters that still haunt the forests of Alaska to this day. Checks out. Yep. For several years, I worked as a contract wildlife biologist on multiple Alaskan military installations and associated training areas. These training areas are massive in size and encompass wide swaths of mountains, forests, and swamps that are remote and undeveloped, even by Alaskan standards. Now, while I worked at one such military base near Delta Junction, it was known among land managers that a site within a restricted area of the installation had previously been used for testing chemical weapons and biological agents on primates during the Cold War. Physical case file records available in the historical office confirmed that these experiments were conducted for nearly two decades in the 60s and 70s. Furthermore, the decrepit monkey cages where some of the primates have been held in captivity, were still visible near facilities where obsolete or surplus equipment had been dumped. To say these cages were grim is an understatement. And when I visited them, they looked like a cross between a high-security insane asylum and a dystopian children's playground, replete with corroded iron jungle gyms, steel anchors for chains and shackles, and clinical white paint that had long since faded and chipped under the elements. 
My work sometimes brought me deep into remote areas of the installation. And for one such project, I was doing grid survey work that required me to travel to a section of mountains and forest where there were no records of roads, development, or any historical other land use. A blank spot on the map, so to speak. Like in where the pyramid is at the center of Alaska. Mm -hmm. that, that actually probably powers it. <laughs> Reaching this area was long and difficult, and the forest there was dick thick. It was dick. <laughs> there was a dick. It forced a dick. Fuck you. <laughs> thick, dark, and unwelcoming. It was somewhere in this area that my work partner and I hiked out of the dense brush into an unnatural clearing in the forest, and in the center of the clearing was one of the monkey cages. This cage was larger and somehow sadder. Surrounding the clearing were rotting observation platforms, long since abandoned. There was no usual sounds of birds or wildlife, and the heavy silence in the clearing was unnerving. Despite the feeling of unease we felt, we went closer to investigate the monkey cage. As we got closer, we realized that unlike the previous cages we had seen, this one had been destroyed from the inside out. The steel bars had been spread and bent outwards. Even some snapped off at the base. The outer clinical rooms had been ransacked. The cinder block walls have been scratched and chipped by clawing hands. Cool. And the observation platform still had old utensils, pencils, and rotted paper in them, suggesting that the abandonment of this site was hasty and unplanned. Smaller trees in the area had been snapped, and the bark from others had been clawed and scratched in a way that was distinct from the manner in which the local wildlife will sometimes mark a tree. Furthermore, as we walked the areas, we realized this monkey cage was a central hub for a network of primitive trails that ran through the trees and the tall grass surrounding us. We quickly left and quietly and kept the story to ourselves. So what happened there? We'll never know. But what I can tell you is this. Since the 1970s, Delta Junction and this area of an interior Alaska has had a lot more reported sightings of Bigfoot than any other part of Alaska or the Yukon. Many Bigfoot hunters have focused on this area as a place to search because of the mountain of reports. And to this day, there continue to be anecdotal reports and strange signs in the dark forests outside of town. Coincidence? That's extraordinarily interesting. Is that fun? If true. If true, of course. Yeah, if but, true. Hey, here, everything's true. And I looked it up. Chimps and gorillas and similar animals can survive in very cold temperatures. Absolutely. So it's very, it is possible. They that, adapt like us. That there's some sort of chimp hybrid thing yeah who knows i find that very interesting i mean i wasn't gonna say a chimp hybrid thing i'm just gonna say chimps chimp hybrid okay <laughs> this is man chimp i know for a fact this is a man chimp i know i had a dream about him um and it's real yeah. but it, uh, this is uh it's interesting because there was also another report that did, was tracking black bears along the sites of bigfoot sightings so there have been like there's now a new thing to say that they do believe that maybe some of these like Truly esoteric sightings could be black bears, but mm -hmm. we've been saying this for, you don't know. We don't yeah. know. Yeah. Who knows? It could be anything. Yeah, sure, there are black bears there. So it's a Bigfoot there, maybe, right? So they all hang out in the same spot. It's not like one's going to be, it's not like they got different fucking neighborhoods. It's one forest. So yeah, the black bears are going to hang out where the Bigfoot hang out. Maybe the Bigfoot use the black bears as a fucking smoke screen. You think so? You think that the Bigfoot are smart enough to hang around the black bears so people can blame Bigfoot sightings on black bears? So you think that Bigfoots are plugged into the internet? And to the Bigfoot hunting community. Yep. <laughs> they got in there. Why wouldn't and they, they're why, plans, they have an internet? And they're making plans around that. Or they just know we hide amongst the black bear. Ah. We hide amongst them. I have other animals coming because they obviously are reticent to have direct communication with humankind. Did you read uh, Devolution by Max Brooks? No. It's the it's the book that he wrote. It, one of his books after World War Z. Uh, it's about it's kind of written kind of the same style as World War Z. It's written through a series of like journal entries of this woman who goes out to this like echo community. Yes, where it's like this it's this new thing, uh, you know, a new way of living, and a bunch of different uh, couples are living in this like small isolated community in Oregon. Uh, and there's a volcano. They get trapped and then they get attacked by a fucking whole herd of Bigfoot. That's awesome. It's really good. I really enjoyed it. I wish it was it, real. It kind of went under the radar, but yeah. it wasn't as big of a hit as World War Z. Uh, but I really enjoyed it. I thought it was it's a great horror book. People have a hard time imagining an, an uh, angry Bigfoot. Mm -hmm. They really do. Because for, as far as I'm concerned, I live every day imagining Bigfoot smiling. That's right. That's all I do. I imagine him hanging out, laughing, and he's laughing. You know what I mean? You'd, have, you'd be laughing with him, hanging out, getting that sweet, sweet Bigfoot reefer. That's right. Because, you know, he's in fucking Oregon, man. Yeah, he's in fucking it. Northern California. Where the fucking... <laughs> 
<laughs> that fucking sticky Nikki is fucking sweet as all hell. You got, right? you got them sticky orbs, man. You yeah. got that like sweet, sweet, like, ooh, got that ganja, that kind bud. Mm, right out smell. there. And then you just like, then you love the fact stone Bigfoot <laughs> hanging out. You know what I mean? Just don't let near your woman. <laughs> he will have sex with her. He'll make a move. Oh, he will. And you'll be like, well, when in. Oregon. <laughs> Guess you got to do it, you know, and then you're going to you're going to see that for the rest of your life. You're going to imagine like, you know, your like, wife you think having it's like a funny consensual sex with a Bigfoot. It's just like and then her moans of pleasure <laughs> and you're just sitting there being like, man, this was fucking bad, dude. And then, like she moves out there. Yeah. She's wearing nothing but Birkenstocks and an enter here sign out in the middle of the fucking forest. And, you know, and you did that to yourself. Yeah. Because you thought it would be kinky. Mm hmm That's where you fucked yourself, buddy. That's right. I got one letter for you. This one oh, is. Oh, you want to? Oh, you got it? Oh, I got, I got, I got this letter. I really want to take this one down because this is related to the story that we covered a couple of weeks ago. It's one of the most terrifying stories that we've covered here. This one's called Death by Sauna. I heard the story about the old couple that died from the broken heater and were cooked to death, and it reminded me of an incident that happened to me about 20 years ago. I was a house painter on a job in an affluent neighborhood. When we arrived at the large multi-million dollar property, we were told that it was being prepped for sale by the bank, that the previous owners were an older couple that had done home improvements in preparation for retirement. They had expanded the master bedroom to include an all-tile giant shower and a new sauna big enough for several people at a time to enjoy. Enjoy. Looks like old people having fun. Yeah, yeah, that's nice. Because, yeah, yeah they, you get rehorny. Yeah. It turns out they had both gone into the sauna to relax and sweat it out in their new luxurious home spa. Unfortunately, they both became overwhelmed by the heat and died and went on to be cooked for many days in the sauna. The juices cooking out and staining the tile grout, along with leaving an odor oh. reminiscent of a rotting pork sandwich. After seeing and smelling this, I immediately called dibs on prepping and painting the outside of the house. None of the guys on the crew who got stuck working on the inside were very hungry at lunch that day. That's so they were just in there the whole time. Yeah, they'd been in there the whole time and the smell stuck. Just wanted to let you know that it does happen. And I believe probably more than you would want. Yeah, of course. You never. I, the idea of having a home sauna mm -mm. is just they do because you just become. Shumai. Home sauna, home hot tub. A hot tub is very dangerous. Well, you got to be careful. I think about, honestly, what happened with Matthew Perry. Yeah. Obviously, you know, he had a bunch of ketamine and then he played pickleball all day and then he had a lot of other issues. Oh, there's, but, yeah, there's many issues. Wait, but still, you have high blood pressure. You got to be careful. Yeah. I was in one the other day. Not to brag. <laughs> we that, you had, that you once had access to a hot tub. Yeah. la dee da la -dee, I was there. <laughs> All right. I know a lot of people want to be me. They want this life. But I went in there. I went in the hot tub and I did get severely dizzy. Yeah. It did happen to me. Did you have high blood pressure? Yeah. Because, but also, like, I I thought I could do it like I used to, where I could just, you just sit in the hot tub for an hour. Mm -hmm. It's bad. Don't yeah. do it. It's bad. Because that's how you die. Well, this is a great way to end. This is a great way to end. Hail Satan. We're going to have news coming up very soon uh, with many, many things. Things. There's many things coming. A lot of things. We're coming. working on a lot of stuff. Yeah. Go to twitch.tv slash LPN TV to watch all of the shares. This week we are back with Brighter Side. It is going to be up on Wednesday tonight. It's going to be live on uh, the channel. And also, we are coming back next week, I believe, with Goodfoot. Mm -hmm. And we're also coming back next week with uh, No Dogs in Space live. We had to postpone it for a week because of the studio move. But hey, we're there now. And but it looks we're there fucking. Now. A nice. It looks a nice. And don't forget, if you are a Patreon subscriber, you can watch last stream on the left every Tuesday at 6 p.m. PST, 9 p.m. EST, uh, and actually interact with us through the chat. Yeah, and roast watch us. it as it happens, and you get to watch all the things that have to get cut before it goes on YouTube. You yeah. get it uncut, 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 and yeah, Euro live. European style. <laughs> all right, hail Satan, fuckers. Oh, hail Gene. Yeah. Goodbye. This show is made possible by listeners like you. Thanks to our ad sponsors. You can support our shows by supporting them. For more shows like the one you just listened to, go to lastpodcastnetwork.com. <laughs>